We've already talked about decomposition by the dot product. That, in that discussion, we had three vectors in a three-dimensional space and another vector which we had to decompose. And because the three decomposition vectors were linearly independent, it was always possible. And it was just a matter of finding the right coefficients, finding the right way to find the right coefficients. But there is another very important geometric problem, which is related to decomposition, but relates to the case when decomposition is not possible. And so it ends up being closer to projection than to decomposition. So here is the problem I'm talking about. So when I say that this problem is related to decomposition, I'm really talking about the motivation for the problem. The problem them itself is actually a problem in projection. So here's the, here's the problem. Suppose we have a plane, and we have two vectors in it. At this point, not necessarily orthogonal or orthonormal. I don't know whether to call them A1, A2, or A and B. What do you guys prefer? A1, A2, or A and B? A and B. OK, A and B. So here is A, and here is B. I drew them this way just so that it's clear that they're not orthogonal. And we have a third vector, B, which does not lie in the same plane. And of course, if we try to represent V as a linear combination of A and B, we would fail. Why? Because all linear combinations of A and B lie in this plane. And V does not lie in this plane. And so it's impossible to decompose V in terms of A and B. This is the picture that represents uh, basically all linear, linear systems. That's the geometric picture. Because at heart, linear systems are a decomposition problem. So this would correspond to a problem where the vector on the right-hand side is not in the column space of the matrix. So a solution is not possible. So what do you do when a solution to AX, B, AX equals B is not possible? You do the best you can, and you solve that system in the least squared sense, which means that you find coefficients that don't give you the target vector because it's impossible, but they give you a vector that's as close as possible to the target vector, and that's called the least squares approximation of the vector on the right. So what makes this discussion particularly nice in my mind is that we're not talking about linear systems. We're talking about a very pure situation where we only have geometric vectors, and so we're solving a geometric problem. So we don't have to worry about whether it's the problem itself or its interpretation or motivation or anything. We have the problem that we're facing. We have to motivation-wise, decompose this vector in terms of A and B. That's not possible. So what we're going to do is find a linear combination that will get us as close as possible to V. So what we're doing is looking for a vector in the plane. Why in the plane? Because that's all we can get out of A and B. So we're looking for a vector in the plane, a linear combination of A and B, that's as close as possible to the vector v. Now, I wish I had one of my geometric vectors with me, so I'll make one. So here's my geometric vector. Here's the plane. Here's two vectors. Not that it's important right now that we have two vectors that span the plane. In fact, I won't draw them yet. I'll just draw this arbitrary origin where everything's happening. So here is our, should I make it even longer? There you go. Here is our vector. So as we've decided our task is to find the vector in the plane of the whiteboard that's as close as possible to this vector. What does it mean to be as close as possible? It means that their difference is as small as possible, as short as possible. We have a concept of how big a vector is. It is its length. So would it be this vector right here? 
That's not so bad. That's not so far away from that one, right? But that's not it, right? Because we can get closer. This one's closer. Yes? This one's right out. This one, we're not even going to bother with. That's going in the wrong direction. So I'm going to get even closer. Right. Can you see it right here? It's like this. I hope you can see the angle. All right. So which one would be closest? Describe it geometrically. This is where you, sh you should really enjoy the beauty of our context. Because we've, we've focused on geometric vectors. We get to have these beautiful geometric discussions and not wonder. You know, I find myself in linear algebra context always thinking about when somebody says closest, I always think to myself, well, what, what's your definition of length? Or in, if you're working with audio signals, you say, I want this to be as close as possible to the original sound. Well, there you have to define, boy, my arm's getting tired. There you have to define what it means to be close. In any other context, in any other context, you have to define what it means to be close. Close in what sense? I'll stop there. You get it, right? I'm trying to push the analogy further. This is the one situation in the world where you don't have to wonder in what sense. Because these are the only objects in the world that have a length. So that's been already decided for you in what sense. It has to be, the length needs to be as small as possible. And so it's clearly the vector, this one right here. Now I really have to hold it steady, but it's that one. And how would you characterize it geometrically? Before we can move any further, you have to characterize that vector geometrically. Describe it to me. Other than saying, it's this one. Like, what is it that's its defining feature? How would you define its defining feature, either geometrically or vector algebraically? That, the di that this difference right here, and that's the difference between v and the closest vector in the plane, is orthogonal to the plane. That's what you're trying to say. Right? Do you see that with any other vector, the segment connecting the tip of that vector to v is not orthogonal to the plane. The only one that is orthogonal to the plane is the one that is closest to the vector v. So that's the characterization. And the beauty of this characterization is that we said orthogonal. And when you say orthogonal, there is an equation for that. And that equation is dot product equals zero. So that's why you should always look for characterizations that can be translated into an algebraic expression. And when you say closest to, that's not bad, because I can write down the length and start using calculus. We'll do just that in a little bit. That's not bad. When you're saying projection, that's also not bad, except you have to define what it is. But when I hear the distance is orthogonal, that's when my mind goes bingo. Because that I can translate into, into an algebraic expression. So we're going to do just that. Here's what we concluded. We're going to find a linear combination of A and B. We're going to call it P because it does correspond to the projection of V onto the plane. And we agree that it's the following vector. It's the vector within the plane as we just agreed, is characterized by the fact that the difference between V and P is orthogonal orthogonal to the plane. That's the best we can do. That's the closest we can come to V. And the nice thing about this discussion is how pure it is. There is no question of what it means clo of what it means to be closest, because we have the distance, and like I said, it's the one situation where the criterion for closeness is already selected for you, and you don't have that much say about it, and you don't want any more say about it. It's the distance. Okay, so this is vector p. 
and it's characterized by the fact that z minus p, which is this vector right here, is orthogonal to the plane. Orthogonal is a great word, we can turn it into equations. And being orthogonal to the plane means that you're orthogonal to both A and B. So we're looking for a system of equations for alpha and beta. Did I just say this already, that being orthogonal to the plane means being orthogonal to both A and B, because A and B define the plane. So if you're orthogonal to A and you're orthogonal to B, so if you're orthogonal to A, which is this plane, and you're orthogonal to B, then you're orthogonal to the plane. So if we want this segment to be, this vector to be orthogonal to the plane containing A and B, it needs to be both orthogonal to A and orthogonal to B, which means that I'll dot it with A, and I'll get zero, and then I'll dot it with B, and I'll get zero, and those will be our two equations and two unknowns. Now, you guys multiply this out and write this, the resulting system in matrix form. So, on, I'll do it silently and you can follow me. I'll multiply it out here and then I'll rewrite it in matrix form here after I erase this. Okay, this is the system that we get. Observation number one, this is our dot product matrix, made its appearance again. And the second point that I would like to make is that this is the exact system that we came up with at the end of Thursday when we were solving the decomposition problem and had three vectors to work with. So the decomposition problem was guaranteed to succeed and there we ended up with a 3 by 3 system that was exactly like this. Pairwise dot products in the matrix, in other words, the dot product matrix. And the vector, the target vector, dotted with the individual vectors from among the decomposition vectors one by one. And this was the right-hand side. So as motivation, this whole discussion started as a decomposition problem. Then we realized we can't do decomposition. The vector is not in the span. So the best we can do is a projection. Notice we're not even saying least squares because you need least squares <laughs> in the linear algebra context when you need to define what your criterion for closeness is. This is a much purer discussion and that's why to me this is a much more enjoyable discussion. So anyway, we, we gave up on decomposition and started talking about projection, realized that there's an orthogonality criterion, translated it into algebra, got back to this linear system and realized that it's the exact linear system that we would be solving if we were talking about decomposition. Even though the context is very different, the target vector is out of the span. So it cannot be solved exactly, but the, same, but the system that perhaps we would have naively constructed if we just followed the pattern of that algebra would have been the same. Isn't that nice? Okay, and this pretty much concludes this discussion because you, what you would need to do is find, evaluate all these dot products and solve this linear system by Gauss elimination if you have to, and the problem is solved. The one remark that I would like to make is that the parallel with decomposition is even better. And you can kind of see it already because it's the exact system we would have been solving in the case of decomposition. But let's consider the special case that the vectors A and B are orthogonal. So I guess orthogonal vectors would need to look like this, right? That means orthogonal. And here is the vector V. What will happen to this matrix when the vector, excuse me, what will happen to this matrix when the vectors A and B are orthogonal? Almost like an identity matrix, a diagonal matrix. In other words, this is gone and this is gone. So we're just left with A dotted with A, the length of A squared on this diagonal, in this diagonal position, and the length of B squared in this diagonal position. 
a diagonal matrix we can solve right away and we find that alpha the exact same expression as we got in case in the case of decomposition so in terms of dot products you would do the exact same thing as you did when we were doing decomposition dot the vector with the corresponding element of the decomposition set and then divide by that element of the decomposition set dotted with itself the same for beta and then what would happen I'm only doing it's obvious but I'm only doing it because I'll enjoy saying it if this was an orthonormal set if they're both unit length well then the denominators go away so when you're doing this wishful decomposition, impossible decomposition with respect to an orthonormal decomposition set all you have to do is dot the vector with the element of the set I can call it a basis it's a basis for the subspace it's not a basis for the whole space it's a basis for the subspace so once again, so projection is just like decomposition from the point of view of dot products so in summary, when we were doing decomposition with respect to an orthonormal basis the decomposition coefficients were very simple you simply had to dot the vector with the corresponding element of the basis when you were doing projection onto subspace in other words, wishful thinking decomposition where you can't do the decomposition proper per se but you can find the vector closest among the ones that are available, the ones that are in the span you do the exact same thing you dot the vector with the corresponding basis element isn't that